we go for the next theory lecture in which we discuss and derive excess pressure within liquid drop and soap bubble. That is, there are two derivations involved. One is excess pressure within a liquid drop and the other is excess pressure within a soap bubble. These two things may sound quite similar, but there is a fundamental difference. A liquid drop is a solid sphere, while a soap bubble is a spherical shell with a thin wall and an empty or air-filled space inside. Therefore, there will be some difference in treatment and the end results also, as we shall see in a short time. I have already said some time back that in a small drop of liquid, the force of surface tension predominates over the force of gravity and therefore the drop takes spherical shape. But what prevents the surface area of the liquid to contract further is the excess pressure that builds up within the drop. And to get an expression for that, we shall consider this magnified view of a spherical drop of liquid of radius, say, capital R. This is the center of the spherical liquid drop. And suppose the pressure inside this liquid drop is P. Well, the external pressure is atmospheric pressure, that is Pa. I just now said the pressure inside P exceeds the pressure outside, and the difference in pressure, delta P is equal to the inside pressure minus the outside pressure. We are supposed to find out an expression for this delta P in terms of the surface tension of the liquid that is taken to be gamma, as usual, and the radius of this spherical drop that is taken to be r. That is our work, okay? So we shall divide this liquid drop in imagination by a vertical plane passing through its center. This is the white outline of this imaginary vertical plane passing through center and dividing this liquid drop into two equal halves that is in two equal hemispheres as I am showing separately. Remember, this is all done in imagination. And since the liquid drop as a whole is an equilibrium, it follows that either hemisphere must also individually be at equilibrium in either horizontal or vertical directions. Let us now focus on the horizontal equilibrium of the right side hemisphere, whatever I say here for the hemisphere, will be equally valid for the left side hemisphere. So one of them is enough for us. We identify the forces acting on this right side hemisphere. First of all, what about the surface force? You can see here that the hemisphere joins to the left hemisphere through this circular face of perimeter 2 pi r. And if I could divide this perimeter into small elementary lengths of dl each, on each of these elementary length dl, this left hemisphere's circular perimeter molecules along this perimeter will be exerting surface tension force in the leftward direction that is across and perpendicular to any short elementary length taken along this perimeter. So I show here a group of tiny force arrows, all of which are drawn across and perpendicular to any short elementary length DL in which you can break up this whole perimeter. Remember, this force is applied at the surface only by the molecules of the left hemisphere all aligned along this perimeter, isn't it? That way this force is acting. So, if gamma is surface tension of the liquid and dl is any elementary length taken here on this perimeter, the corresponding force of surface tension is gamma into dl on that element and each tiny arrow represents that force of gamma into dl only. And you can see here, since the force is acting towards the left horizontally, all the forces are parallel to each other. Therefore, the vector sum of the forces is given by simply gamma into the length of the perimeter that is 2 pi r. Therefore, let me write here, the surface force 
exerted on the right hemisphere by the left hemisphere across the perimeter of the circular face is gamma, the surface tension multiplied by the perimeter of the circular face, that is 2 pi r. That was about surface force. There is one more force acting in the horizontal direction because of the excess pressure within this liquid. I have already said pressure inside is P, outside pressure is Pa, excess pressure is delta P, that is P minus P, and therefore this excess pressure force is acting in the radially outward direction from inside onto this hemispherical surface. And to show the pressure force properly, let me first draw a few radial lines, all starting from the center of this hemisphere, that is this point, this one. They are all radially outward directions, and I plot my force arrows on these radial lines, all pointing outwards and acting on this hemispherical surface. So once I plot this force arrows for pressure force, let me take out these white lines that might confuse you later. So back with the cleaner screen and referring to my figure once again, I was telling you that these radially outward forces are standing for the pressure force. What you do is that this hemispherical surface is broken down in imagination into small tiny areas of say DAH and if excess pressure is delta P, that is P minus PA, on each of these tiny areas, pressure force is acting of magnitude delta P into DA, DA being the area into consideration. That force is acting in the radially outward direction. So how to adapt these forces vectorially and to get an expression for the net pressure force acting on the hemisphere in the horizontal direction. For that, we shall take two small areas on the hemispherical surface at equal distance from the axis of symmetry. So here is my axis of symmetry drawn for the hemisphere passing through the center horizontally. And suppose I take two tiny areas of dA each above and below this axis of symmetry. Draw the corresponding pressure forces there well, if delta P is the excess pressure acting outwards, delta P into the area concerned, that is dA, so the magnitude of the force here also, delta P is the pressure difference, multiply this by the area concerned, that is dA, same magnitude but different directions. So I resolve these pressure forces into their respective components as I am showing and you can see easily that by symmetry that the components of these two forces acting perpendicular up and down. Hello students, you got a glimpse of our video lessons through this small lecture. We have hundreds of lectures like this one covering various topics of advanced school level and intermediate physics in our website. They are exhaustive and often accompanied by elaborate diagrams to make concepts even clearer. They are taught with passion and sometimes with a bit of fun. So at the end of the lesson you have a commanding grip on the subject and you are ready for the board and competitive exams. Subscribe at physicsacademyonline.com to access video lectures of highest standard on various topics of physics.